Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Garden State Growing. And today I have a really exciting video for you. I really hope so because I'm trying to contain my enthusiasm right now. Some of the people out there, they get a little annoyed that I get over enthusiastic and I start rambling. Kind of like what I'm almost about to start doing now. So this video, I will just ultimately tell you, it's kind of a mess. And there is a story behind it, okay? You know, I was sitting around one day and I was just doing what I was doing and I saw that there was a message from somebody on Garden State Growing from this guy, Lou. And uh, we started conversing back and forth probably about the last six months or so about certain things. He had a garden plot that he was getting rid of. He had some stuff that I could take if I wanted and I and, you know I was like all right that's real interesting thank you very much that's very kind of you you know and we just kept on communicating back and forth and then I started growing uh, my mushrooms on Garden State Growing and uh, he started making some comments and stuff like that and I really appreciated them and uh, and then one day he reached out and he was like he, he knew that uh, I had never tasted a morel mushroom ever before and uh, let alone forest for one or knew anything about what it was like to go out and forage for one. Uh, so he contacted me a couple days ago and he was like, listen, uh, I've got more morels than I know what to do with. They're gonna go bad if I don't like either cook them or give them away, do you want some? And I was like, yes, like, oh my God, yes. You should see the text I sent him. And uh, he was like, yeah, cool, we'll set something up this weekend, you can stop on by and I'll, uh, you know, I'll cook some up for you and we'll hang out for a bit and uh, I'll give you something to bring home. And I was like, that is just absolutely amazing. I mean, I had plans for today, I had plans to clean up my uh, corn patch and my, uh, my, my uh, carrot patch and get them in the ground. But uh, I was just too intrigued. And yes, today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day uh, to everyone out there. And I did do this with my wife's full consent today. So not only was I gonna go to his house and he was gonna cook for me and he was gonna uh, give me some morels, uh, about two days before I was supposed to meet up with him, he said, uh, do you want to go forging for morels? And I was like, oh, like yes like right now can we go right now so believe it or not you know uh the only day that we could actually get together to do it together was mother's day and uh i asked my wife i said is, is it okay if i go out real early with this guy and just forage for some mushrooms she goes eric all i want to do is go to my mom's house and like sit with my family she's like you can do whatever you want to do and i was like Oh boy, this is this is fantastic. I wind up meeting up with Lou this morning, had a little bit of conversation to only find out that I've honestly, believe it or not, I've known him for about 10 years. <laughs> uh, I met him about 10 years ago. Not that we were actually friends back then, but we ran in similar circles that constantly commingled. Uh, so we've had very much like conversations before all the time and it was really funny. So anyway, so this is part of the story. Um, a lot of things happened, a lot of things went on. Like I said, the video is kind of like a shit show because I was just so enthusiastic and so excited the entire day that I kept on forgetting to hit the record button or I was recording when like I didn't think so out of my pocket. I took a butt ton of pictures. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna put this video together that anybody else besides me is gonna enjoy. And it does have something to do with this gigantic tree that I got growing out of this Home Depot bucket that you can't see. But at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this gigantic tree as well. So this video is more about this undescript plastic bag of goodies that I have right here. And I'm finally gonna, I mean, you probably have an idea if you saw the title of the video of what is in this bag, but I'm not gonna show you yet. What I am gonna show you is the footage that I shot today and it's real quick. I like, I really thought I recorded a lot more than I did, but what I did do was I took a lot of pictures. So maybe I'll do like a voiceover on that part. So I'm gonna string that together right now. I'm gonna, you know, uh, try to make it make a little bit of sense. Uh, try to explain some things as we're looking at it and then at the end we're gonna come back We're gonna look at my harvest. We're gonna check these out. We're gonna weigh them I'm not gonna cook any of these up tonight because I literally had a saucer full of them 
at Lou's house that he cooked up for me and uh, a little mushroom down. <laughs> oh, I said it. But there you go. All right, so let's get into that video. They call them diamond shapes, but mm -hmm. like the thing will be coming down and then it'll crisscross over to the next row. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so this is a dead ash. Dead ash. And there's, there are, there's another one. They're all over the place. Yeah. Um, but this, so, let me see. Uh, so there's another one. So if you. So this is that one, popl Poplar. Yep. What's this one here? So, Do you know what this one over? The smooth barked one? This is a, probably maple. Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh, yeah, I can see the leaves maple. now. There's a lot of maples, um, and there'll be various, there must be a number of species. Um, they're gray. A lot of times they're smooth like this. It's easy to tell. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're a little more flaky and, 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 and broken up like other trees. But you get to notice, uh, you still get to notice that they are maples too. And you'll find those those shaggy ones closer to okay. the water a lot of times. So that one over there, I'm going to say, is the ash? Yep. Okay. Yep. You can, so it's that deeper thing. If you look over there, see, it's a little tanner. Uh -huh. It's just a subtle bit more brown in it. And so what you do is you spot around and you just kind of like travel up to, you travel up to all the tulips. And, and like, so as I approach the tulip, I'll just be looking around down all around the whole area. A lot of times I'm finding them out about that far. You'll okay. find them from the tree right out. To about 10 um, yards. 10 10 yard yard sometimes even further. Sometimes you can't even, there's, you don't see a pool of popper around, so it's hard uh -huh. to tell. But the roots go way out, and I'm pretty sure that it's because of the roots. And then so, like, you know, I'll, I'll kind of just take my time. I've, I've been through here a few weeks ago. Um, so I'll go slow, kind of slow, but kind of quickly through here. I want to get through there, through some brush, and then to another whole stand mm -hmm. that I haven't really... People talk about 45 to 50, and I don't walk, don't keep walking. Okay. And then somebody was talking about 60 to 65. So, but at some point, the soil temperature gets too warm, right? So, the first ones come out on hillsides facing south, because you get uh, the sun hitting. Ah, uh, okay. So... Ah, ah, ha, 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 I found it. That's why I wanted you to do it. I found it. That's what I wanted you to do, now. You can now when you, what you do. Should have brought my, my knife. I brought a knife. So, but he's still very, very, very edible. In fact, that's a nice. So when it starts getting darker, and and sometimes this here will get a little bit like even when we when you pick this later, uh -huh. it might get a little crumbly. But uh, you can also just pinch it. So pick that, put it in your bag. Oh, right. And then so since that came up, I don't walk around too much, right? <sighs> You know, first time out and you're getting the morale. You're, you're, you're doing very well. I hooked you up, dude. This is my very first morale I ever picked. Thank you, Lou. <laughs> Let's look around some more. Okay, guys, this is the very first morale I have ever found by myself. The other morale that I found, Lou actually found it and then he allowed me to find it again. So this one is the first one that I've ever found by myself. It is uh, a little... Oops, sorry. It's definitely a little dry. Um, I don't know. I'm going to put it in my bag anyway, though, because Lou's not next to me to let me know if it's, like, too old, too dry. I think it is. But I'm going to put it in my bag anyway, and let's move on. I found another one. <laughs> it's not all standing up and pointy. But nope. Like, but I, I could now. see it. It, it. it shot right out at me. Yeah. Could you see it? Oh. It's a beaut. It's a beaut. Hollow. That's why we know it is a morel because if it's false morel, you get the solid, right? I think so. It won't look like that, though. Yeah. No, once you see the morel. Let's see. Yeah, get down low and just scan out. Scan out to the distance a little bit. Uh oh, baby, baby, baby. Look at that guy. Just sticking out. Oh my goodness. I love one. 
the way I see how far out in front of it. Yep. And that's coming from the, that, yeah, that it's big tree right here. That's a sweet gun right there. I, you, would, you would be hard pressed to convince me it's under a sweet gun. The culmination of my foraging harvest of morel mushrooms, in addition to extras that he did give me, but I am going to separate them out, and it's going to be really easy for me to separate them out. I'll try to take a video of it uh, just by how dry they are or um, how fragile they are uh, compared to the fresh ones that we just pulled today. Here we have my nice little pile of morels and it is going to be easy for me to identify and uh, move them aside. Uh, to what was fresh and what was not like see this one I got today is just so incredibly beautiful and um, and fresh and please uh, don't ask me to identify it I know it's one of the darker uh, morels but actually it was just since it's got such a white top I'm not gonna get into identifying mushrooms with everybody right now okay uh, i'll tell you these are real morels and they are most of them are really fresh most of them i did pick today um this one here i did not as you can see it's a little drier it was sitting around a little bit this one here definitely picked today the stem was kind of eaten but that's okay uh i'm not sure about this one but it's still real moist i'm gonna put it over there Oh, definitely today. You can still see the soil. I pulled them up with the soil. You can cut them with a knife or you can pinch them back or you can just pull them up from the soil. Um, some people say it's not good to do that because then you're hurting the mycelium root of the mushroom and it might not grow back. I, I'm sorry. This was my first time out foraging for mushrooms ever. Um, this one was definitely given to me. This one was definitely picked today. I'll put it over here. Um... Oh God, I think I'm not sure about this one. I'm gonna put them over here. Oh, this one was definitely picked today. You can see how fresh it was. Now, it doesn't mean I picked every single one of these fresh today. Lou was the morel magician out there and he was super nice enough to allow me to find a lot of these mushrooms. Um, this one he gifted to me. This was a gift to me. This one, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I don't know, I remember picking this one with the folded in top. I was so excited, I thought it was like, I think it was like one or two of the first ones I ever found by myself. This one was, I loved finding this one. And I and I, I think I showed it to you um, when I picked it. So I'm just gonna keep on separating these and we'll come back to, uh, you know, after they're separated. We'll see, uh, and how much they weigh, the together, separate, and, and all that good stuff. All right, so as you can see, after they get picked, they are like super, super fragile. And the drier they get, the more fragile they get. I have like this giant pile of mushroom, just broken offness uh, sitting in front of me. Uh, it's still good. Take the twig out of it. You could still take the twig out of it. You could still, I, I, I'm not gonna bother. So let's weigh up what I believe either Lou picked himself or and it's starting to rain or he gifted to me from another foraging adventure that he had by himself so let's take this we'll uh, zero it out oh don't move I want to okay I it was zeroed out I promise you I just want to uh, get a video on it so right now we are at 1.2 ounces Two ounces. Four ounces. Almost five ounces. I'm not even gonna add in the scraps. Um, whatever, get, get rid of that. All right, so 5.4 ounces, very nice, very good. So let's move ahead. I gotta just keep on going because it's starting to rain. And let's see what I know I picked today. I remember picking these mushrooms. Um, and th these are also included with the ones that Lou 
allowed me to find. Uh, and I came in at 5.8 ounces, and they still have a lot of moisture in them. So let's just move on real quick before the rain really starts and I get stuck out here. Okay, so not only did this amazing brother invite me out to uh, go foraging for morels, and we were just super successful, especially for my first trip. He, like, he warned me, listen, this is not common for your first time out, even with somebody who knows what they're doing, um, for you to find this many morels. And uh, he's like, you're going to come out here and probably spend a hundred hours and be disappointed. It's going to happen. That's fine. I, I can accept that. Today I had a great day. I, I even got to try these mushrooms. I, I know I might be repeating myself because uh, I, I just don't know where the videos are going to lie when I edit this whole thing. But I did want to bring you into something that's even as special as going out and finding morels and cooking my first time picking any type of wild mushroom from the wild and actually preparing them and eating them uh it was uh, this is the type of moments in life that i live for but then he threw icing on top of the cake and he looked at me and he said listen man i've got this gigantic fig tree in a bucket I had to dig up because I'm being forced to move. And it's really starting to rain hard, but I'm gonna get through this. Uh, and I need to find a home for this fig tree, are you interested? And my wife has wanted a fig tree in our backyard uh, forever now. And uh, I have this extraordinarily mature, robust fig tree. Uh, I can't remember what type of fig he told me it was. He just told me I wasn't allowed to take the white fig. That's all he told me. But he says, take this fig tree and uh, it will do marvelous for you. It, he, he told me he, it, it is a neglected a little bit. It's root bound. It's a little dry. Uh, it needs some TLC. I'm going to uh, do a little, I, I think I have the knowledge to do this, but I, I'm going to do a little bit more research and uh, try to take care of this root bowl. I'm going to find a spot in my yard uh, that I'm either going to put it in a container I can move or and bring inside during the harsh winters or a place where I could shelter it. Uh, very good. So, and he gave me, this guy was just so intelligent and he just had such a plethora of knowledge when it came to certain plants, trees, mushrooms, and other things. I felt like my brain, my, my brain was being rejuvenated. It was a sponge and it was just, I was just soaking in just all this knowledge and information and, and I, I, could, I couldn't help it. I was giddy like a schoolgirl. You know, every time I found my own morale, man, it was just amazing. And to come home with this beautiful fig tree on Mother's Day and be able to present this to my wife and say, I'm gonna put this in our yard. I know you've wanted it for a very long time. That is just icing on the cake. Lou, I love you. Uh, Garden State Growing, I love you. The community, you guys, I love you. You know what, even you nasty people that leave the nasty comments, I'm not getting into that. You know, whatever. I love you. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this with your friends or your family. I had an amazing day, even though I didn't get anything done in my garden. But that's just it. Uh, I love you and have a great evening. I'll see you on the next episode coming up soon.
Walking alone, the streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my own silhouette. I'm getting strong. I already called not helping. <laughs> <laughs> I already called not helping. No. I call it during you. No! I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. 